It's going to be an 18 episode uh, first season. 18 episodes. Yes! Daredevil Born Again. Welcome back to Disney Marvels for a week of July 24th, 2022. This is episode 188. Disney Marvels, the show about Disney, Marvel, Lucasfilm, Muppets, Pixar, 20th Century, the Parks, and much, much more. If it has to do with Disney, it's fair game. I'm your host, Matthew Graken. Yes, I know, everybody. I, I apologize. I said there was going to be a poll, and I, I meant to put one out about San Diego Comic-Con. And I'll ask you right here, how excited were you about San Diego Comic-Con's announcement? Were you really excited? Somewhat excited. Not too excited. Didn't even know that San Diego Comic-Con was happening. Let me know. Put it in the comments. Send it out on the social networks. That being said, um, I had a lot going on this weekend, which is why I, I never got to the survey. And I have a very... Very important uh, announcement about, particularly about the show, about Disney Marvel's podcast. Um, in true fashion, it will be coming at the end of today's episode. So make sure, listen all the way through for today's uh, special, very important announcement about uh, Disney Marvel's podcast. I'm not going to say anything more. You will catch it at the end of the episode. So without further ado... And on that bombshell, we'll be back after these words from our friends and sponsors. And now, on with the show. In this great future, you can't forget your past. This past weekend in San Diego, many things happened. There was a heat wave. Pavements was starting to spontaneously combust. Water was on a shortage. And a lot of smelly people were gathered together in Hall H at the convention center for San Diego Comic Con. Lots of news came out of it. Some little news, some big news. And since we are talking big news, I had to bring on big news themselves. And in this case, the big news being Matt Leonard is back and joining us. And because the force is strong with this person. And Kenobi himself said he is the chosen one. Which means Isaac Sagu will be carrying a red lightsaber and walking around throwing little children left and right. Isaac, welcome back. Matt, I hello, how, you how come Isaac gets the red lightsaber and gets to throw children? I want to throw children. Yeah, I don't know why. I don't know why I. I, I why guess. is Isaac's first of all, favorite? First of all, why do I get the red? I want like the pink one, for, like Mace Windu, because pink. you know that would. I want the pink one, and then two. Why do I have to murder children? That's just weird. That's more of a Matt. <laughs> I, I didn't thing. say yeah, that's my thing. That's a Matt. Let <laughs> that's a Matt. Matt, Matt <laughs> so like that's weird. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> Leonard's the grand, grand the show all over again. I don't like this. <laughs> Welcome back to Disney Marvels. This week's episode will be Look sponsored by The Sith. Oh, man. That's hilarious. Anyway. No, we're but 30 seconds and we're talking Star Wars, and there was no Star Wars news. Which is shocking, but uh, yeah, no, no thank you for no, having me. No, it's not, because they, cause they just they came just off of Star Wars Celebration. They, they, they dumped celebration. everything on Star Wars Celebration. The only they, thing we got out of out of Star Wars was, I think, another Andor trailer, which was just a re-edit of the initial trailer with a couple of new bits in it. So there there wasn't wasn't too much out of that. But yeah, they just had celebration. Um, on the on the Disney end, we got a very 
minimalist trailer for the National Treasure series. Mm-hmm. Um, we got a. How many a, is what, that now? Is that their third, fourth, seventh? I haven't paid attention to. Well, it's it's the third production in this in the National Treasure series, but it's the, it's the first one that's going to be a, a series unto itself. Where the yeah. other two were two were movies. This is going to oh. be a. Correct. Yeah. Uh, um, one of the original actors do come back uh, to uh, to reprise their role for the series. I do remember that much. I know. Um, uh, yeah, Justin uh, Bartha, who uh, was Riley Pohl, will come back to reprise his role in that, and then uh, for the for the for the series. So that was. Uh, have, you, have you ever either of you ever seen one of the National Treasure movies? Uh, dude, I saw both of them. Different. Really? I, I saw Are they the any good? They're really good. Okay. I saw I'm the first huge, one. Really, really good. I'm not saw, a huge Nick Cage fan, so neither you know, am Nick, I. Nick Cage is, I, I think it's one of his best films was was Nick Cage, which is why a lot of people are clamoring for. They really want a three, and I have to admit, I think they really want a three in this too. But um, but instead they decided to go with uh with uh, a, you know, a limited series, which to be honest, I thought the trailer looked terrible, but. It is it, national it trailer. I wouldn't even call it a trailer. So, it, it's so no, it's not. I don't think no. It wasn't even a trailer. It was more of like a first look. It's more like a first look. But it here's, be, here's your main character. It didn't look good, but you know I'll also watch it because <laughs> it's national treasure. <laughs> and if it get if it and if it, listen if if my viewing time actually gives me an actual national treasure tre- uh, three with Nicholas Cage, I'll be all for it. If, if, I, if I have to sacrifice my time for, like, bad products, sure. As long as it gets me National Treasure 3. <laughs> well, and it's, Disney it's loves be... you. <laughs> I don't care what I have to do. Give me give me bad stuff. I'll watch it. That's okay. <laughs> I, mean, we, I mean, we've already suffered just, through a couple of it. Man. <laughs> so, oh, so you, you saw Black Widow in Thor Love and Thunder. Um uh... Ooh, <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. Um, uh, yeah, there's going to be ten episodes mm-hmm. for National Treasure. Oh, really? That's good. That's actually good. They're actually uh, expanding their count on episodes, which is seems like, which is good because it sounds like that's been uh, right now a, a complaint is that their episodes are too that they're married short. to the number six for six. some reason yeah. um, or not. So. <laughs> well, it and it's like Andor. So Andor is twelve episodes. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? But my bet is they're going to be half-hour episodes. That's fine. Which means that you're basically yeah, like six, six one-hour episodes, one hour like episodes. everything else that we got. Yeah, that's I can see that. Yeah, I totally can see that. I totally can see that. Yeah. So, I, I someone needs to tell Disney. You're putting this on a streaming service. You're not limited to commercials and time slots. You can make this as long as you want, as long as it needs to be. It doesn't have to fit a 45-minute window. Yeah, but I think they are. I don't think they've... I, well, I was going to say, there are, there are a couple that, like, Boba Fett overstayed its welcome, obviously. Mm. Oh, I, Actually, but, it. I mean, Boba Fett was the one. Is the one that I look at and I go, "Ooh, that." They, the pacing on that was really awful. Yeah. But. Yeah. But Kenobi, the six parts worked, but you could have added another five minutes into each episode and it still would have been fine. Huh. I mean, and again, what, I, I what think. What would you fill with those? And what would you fill with th- those five minutes? I'm sure they have something that's laying around. Yeah, well, you put in a little more. I think you, they told the story. They told the story they needed to tell. More Leia. She was enjoyable. <laughs> um. So yeah, we got we got that. We got Moon Girl. Um. Which that seems interesting. It, it reminds me a lot of in like the animation style and kind of how it's written. It's like the um, if you guys remember Jake Long, American Dragon. Yeah. No. Uh, I remember that. I remember you that. remember that one, Isaac? Yeah, it, it's it kind of fits kind of that niche. Um, no. It is based on a, a lesser known Marvel comic series. 
by the same name. Yeah. So it looks fun. It, it it's just gonna be a like a, a fun, not too serious romp. That's going anime, to but it doesn't have to be. It shouldn't be serious. I think the animation should no. be fun. No, and, and this this will be. Uh, yeah. The little clip that they showed was uh, the hero Moon Girl and her friend are chasing down some bad guys. The dinosaurs walking behind them, and the Moon Girl goes to stop them. And goes, who are you? I'm a superhero. Do you have a name? I'm working on that. How are we supposed to take you serious if you don't have a name? And the friend's like, oh, see, I told you so. Well, that's because I got my friend here who's going to stop you and turns to show off the dinosaur and he's not there. So she chases after him. He's in a dumpster eating garbage. <laughs> She's like, no, you need to come this way. Then you see the bad guys driving off in their car. So it, it's, it, you know, it's fun. It's going to be a, a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. It's going to be enjoyable, I think. Um... So I think I'm trying to think. Was there anything else that came out on Friday? What? Oh yes, and the two, the three new movies to come to Disney Plus. Yeah. Oh yeah. What the three new? Oh yes. Yeah. Yes. Deadpool, cool. Deadpool two, and Logan. Which... Although strangely, not Once Upon a Deadpool. This is strange too. Yes, this this is interesting that you would think um, they would have just thrown that in. I, no, well, Once Upon a Deadpool was just simply the more PG version of Deadpool too. Yeah, exactly. But, yes. Yeah. But this way, but, it, you kind of brought in this, the audience. I mean, like, I guess, I mean, one could say that they could have done that, I, but it, it, for what it sounds like what Disney is, it seems like Disney is slowly starting to get more comfortable in presenting more mature content on their platform now. And I think that's just... Hey, we're going to present these shows that are very crass and, um, you know, with mature tones. And then, and I think it's also given a hint in the direction that probably want to take Marvel Studios with a couple of certain titles that I think we'll be talking about uh, in, in the podcast uh, later on. So. Quite possibly. Pro and, I mean, we know oh, Deadpool right. 3 is being hashed out at the moment. Hopefully this quiets uh, people's, um, oh, Disney's going to Disney-fy it and dumb it down because they don't, you know, they're anti-R movies and they're, they're not going to support, you know, the Deadpool of the previous two movies. Well, if they d had such a problem with it, it wouldn't be on Disney+. Plus. Matt, did you... Uh... Actually, both nuts. Um, it's, it was funny. Um, on, on Facebook, Ryan Reynolds actually put up, uh, was talking about the, the announcement, and then he ends up putting up like uh, those uh, red label R warnings, and it's like different funny um, like R label uh, warnings. You have to go check it out on Ryan Reynolds' uh, Twitter feed. He just posted something weird like for kids, or it, I don't, I don't. I, I don't know all the gist. I was like, I was just kind of like briefly looking at it, but it, it's 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 a funny gag that he did. Um, during I the saw the one. I saw the one that was the old uh, the old Disney clamshell VHS cassettes, and it's like and it's Aladdin and Beauty and the Beast and Jungle Book whenever, and then like slipped in there are Deadpool, Deadpool Two, and Logan. Yeah. <laughs> I was actually on the official Deadpool uh, Facebook page mm -hmm. where they're like, you know, before. Quick before these go back in the vault. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ryan Reynolds is a marketing genius, man. Like, I don't, honestly, know, I don't know if that was necessarily him, but no. I thought it was very funny. I, I he again, like uh, before, you know, before the uh, when he was his Fox, they gave them a lot of free reign to do a lot of that stuff. So, like, it, I, right. I'm 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 pretty sure it was him. So I hope that Disney kind of gives them that same kind of freedom to. I know I, I figure Kevin, Kevin Feige will give them a couple of boundaries, but other than that, like have fun with it. You know, have fun with a lot of the Disney stuff that we have. So uh, it's going to be very interesting to see, see that it. image. Yeah, that's the one. Yep. Yep. That, that, that'll play well on the podcast that people are listening to. Yeah. Oh, that image. <laughs> Well, so, yeah. Go to Red Ryan Reynolds or go to the Deadpool Twitter accounts and check them out for yourself. Yeah, it was uh, quite enjoyable and very funny. So, 
Yeah, so that that's an interesting take. I'm I'm, I'm glad they're comfortable with this. I, I I'm not surprised that this came about, being that they uh, put on the the limitation restrictors what a month ago, mm-hmm. uh, where you can put in a pin code and you know res- set the age li- uh, rating limits. Uh, kids can only watch these things and not these other ones. Um, it, I, the movie that caused that to happen is slipping my mind at the moment. But was it Free Guy? No, it wasn't Free Guy. I think it was. Maybe it was Free Guy. Because it was around that time. Yeah, that would make sense. It was really funny because my well, I I saw it. I got the email and I went oh and I and I logged in and did whatever I had to do. Uh, my wife didn't, and then suddenly she's like, "Hey, I can't get into anything on Disney Plus except kids stuff." I'm like, oh. And so I was like, no, no, there, you should have gotten an email. You should do a thing. So she was able to go through her emails and find it and, and get herself set up. I there think we go. were going to watch like Moon Knight or something. And she's like, I can't find Moon Knight. You're not mature enough. You're not mature enough for this, honey. <laughs> That's funny. Um, all right. So, yeah, that I think we'll oh, say maybe, that. You know what? Maybe maybe it was because uh, uh, I think it, that might have been. Oh, that's you know what it was. Let me start this conversation over again in English. It was it was the uh, it was the other Marvel shows. It was it was Daredevil and. Uh, yes. Fist, the Netflix, it was the Netflix. Jones yes. When they brought the Daredevil. Dare- yes. And Defenders. The Netflix that's show. what it was. Yeah. The previous Netflix shows of the, the prior yeah, Netflix shows, the, and they it was finally the MC brought them over. Netflix shows moving to, to Disney Plus. That's what it was that caused him to, yeah, because I, I, I still haven't watched all of Deadpool or Daredevil, but what I saw of it, whew, it's Daredevil, man. It's brutal. It's mm. brutal, but it, it's done well. Oh, yeah, don't get me wrong. It was done very well. well most days, of I'll the way through and, the second season. One of these days, I'll sit down and watch it again. Or finish watching it that's me too <laughs> that's when we get there i'll finish watching it again no so that, yeah, what's the well so there's there's that's a good segue we can now let's talk about deadpool not deadpool daredevil god i'm gonna just gonna leave this show altogether. <laughs> <laughs> you know what how, how about this since we're gonna start the segue with san diego comic-con so basically everybody that's on here you know um, hopefully had, had the opportunity to uh, watch the Marvel panel, which basically at the end they ended up giving a lot of uh, very interesting things about Phase Four. Not only that, between I think even five, five and six, and, I and think a little bit of six into. that was correct. Yeah, so five and for, six. So, so how? So to actually really kick this off, I think what we're going to do is what out, out of the entire panel that was shown, and I guess we'll also. <laughs> Matthew Leonard, yes. What what was your favorite part about the the panel? Talk about it. So that it's all you, man. I'm sorry. What was your question? <laughs> I wasn't really listening. You're turning <laughs> a little green. Am I? Your green is showing. Is it green with yeah. it? I'm exactly. looking forward to She-Hulk. It's yeah. not easy being green. No. No, She-Hulk is, um, I'm actually so... I'm so excited about She-Hulk. And I said this, I've said this countless times on the, uh, on, I've come, anytime I've come on and we've talked and She-Hulk's come up, Matt, anytime you and I have talked about She-Hulk, anytime the subject of the She-Hulk series has come up, I've said the same thing, which is, I hope they do, I hope they do Dan Slott's run. I hope they pull from Dan Slott's run. I hope they pull from Dan Slott's run. Because Dan Slott's run on She-Hulk is one of my all-time favorite comic book runs ever. Period. End of sentence. Certainly my favorite thing to ever come out of Marvel is Dan Slott's She-Hulk. Although his Fantastic Four right now is really good too. But Dan Dan Slott's She-Hulk, I will read and I will read and I will read again. It's so good. It's so much fun. It's everything I love about comics. Um, Dan Slott is so good. Dan Slott is so good at playing with his toys. How Uh, good is he? That's exactly what he does through all of Mm -hmm. She-Hulk. So I was thrilled last night when I was watching the trailer and and uh, Halden Holloway showed up, and I just went, yes, there you go. I I sort of saw that coming. I was so thrilled to see. That, yes, they are doing uh, borrowing characters from from uh, or will be using characters from uh, from Dan Slott's run. 
Um, it looks like it's going to be funny. It looks like Mark Ruffalo is really enjoying. I love when I can watch a performance. When I, I love when I'm watching an actor have fun at their job. I love when you can, you, you, I, I don't remember, if, I've said this a couple times where I don't like watching actors act when you can catch an actor acting. Mm -hmm. And if, yes. yeah, I said, I said that when we were talking about Kenobi was that I saw her like, oh, I can catch her acting. But I love, I love when I catch an actor having fun. And if you That's watch funny. the trailer for She-Hulk, you can see Mark Ruffalo having fun. And no. I got a feeling that I got a feeling She Hulk. I think you're going to see her kind of having fun, some fun with it too. Um, so I'm I'm very excited about She Hulk. The trailer just uh, I I was a little nervous when they released the teaser a couple months ago. The trailer put all of my fears to rest. I am so excited to, for She Hulk. I cannot wait to watch this show. I love She Hulk. Yeah, this um, this trailer was so much better than the initial one that they they put she out. Broke the fourth wall. She broke the fourth wall. I, I, she she looks right at the camera and and it not yes, this is exactly what She Hulk should be. She should t she should look at the camera and talk to the camera. Absolutely. And and she's the first comic book character to ever do that. Uh, no. I think for Marvel. Yeah. I'm pretty sure, no, I think she is. Oh, oh, oh from in, in the comic in books. Marvel, I, I yeah, thought you meant as far as She's the first ever. Not, um, I thought it would have been Daredevil, but no, she's the first to ever do that. You mean Deadpool? Dead, yeah. Deadpool, I'm sorry. But See, she now predates. you're doing it. Good, it's not just me. <laughs> Except for right. you're doing the other one. I'm doing the other one, yeah. Yeah, Daredevil. Oh. No, She-Hulk breaks the fourth wall, and she's, and it's a, yeah. I'm so excited for, for She-Hulk. And then, of course, at the end of the trailer, we see her... Daredevil. Legal counterpart, Daredevil, which uh, honestly was like, like basically that's like the ultimate layup if they didn't didn't get that right. Yeah, like, you know what I mean. Yeah. Like, what it's are you doing? A, it's such a fun thing when she you, and Matt face off against each other. You should right? not. And, and there's a in, in the in the <laughs> comics, there's a very strong acknowledgement from each of them. Like, I know who you are, and I know what you do. Yeah. And there's this sort of, it's a fun interplay where. Um, the, 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 there's Jennifer and Matt in the courtroom, and then there's Daredevil and She-Hulk outside the courtroom, and yeah. it's it's it really is, the, the, you know, they're very professional with each other in the courtroom and completely ignoring, you know, She-Hulk. It's Jennifer having to completely ignore everything she knows about Matt Mur Murdock. She can't tip her hand. She can't do that to him. And then she'll get outside with him on some rooftop and go, hey, what the heck are you doing to me in there? Yeah. And he'll be like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. This is what I got to do. It's my job. Come on, let's go bust some heads together. And, you know, they, they go from being against each other to being with each other. And, and it's always fun when, the, when you have the two of them together. I, think I do have one it. disappointment yeah. in all of this, though. I have one disappointment in all of this, which is one of my, my other favorite character to watch She-Hulk interact with is Ben Grimm. I love, and I, uh, I just obviously Fantastic Four is a couple of years off. We're not going to see it this yeah. time around. But I'm, I'm itching to see She Hulk and Ben on the big screen together because be it's, it's, it's this very sort of brotherly, sisterly, you know. Oh, I can, I, you know, they can roughhouse with each other, or you know, that that kind of thing. Or they can. The, there was a her most recent comic. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, there's, there's an issue where she's. Um, she sets up a. She and Titania agree to meet each week and just fight with each. They, they set up Fight Club, and they're there and they're fighting with each other. And you suddenly, he's from off off panel. Is don't worry, Shulky, Shulky, I'm coming. And <laughs> no, 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 Ben, no, this is this is okay. And she's got to stop Ben Grimm and slow him down and explain to him that this is okay. And he's well, can can I get in on this? Can I have some fun? You know, so it's. <laughs> I love whenever, or or there's sometimes Ben will sort of come to her and like, I, I kind of screwed up with one of Reed's inventions, and now I'm getting sued. Can you help me? You know, it's 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 a lot of fun when Ben and Jen are together. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's sort of best friends who pal around with each other and play poker and drinking buddies. And mm -hmm. uh, I'm disappointed we're not gonna. I don't think we're gonna see any of that this time around. But I'm itching to get She Hulk and Ben Grimm on on screen together. I agree. No, I, I totally agree. And, and to add into another point, I, I'm i excited to see Mark Ruffalo, like you said, actually have fun with being the Hulk because you yeah. really feel for the longest period of time that 
unfortunately, like the Hulk, and, and because here's another issue about that too, uh, you know, between the Hulk and She-Hulk, we've always known that the She-Hulk could do things better than the Hulk. So the fact that they're actually going to play with that concept uh, move in, in this show is going to be really funny and fascinating. And also it just kind of gives uh, an opportunity for the Hulk to kind of play the mentor role. Because throughout the last, you know, couple of decades, he's he's only been known, he's been, a, let's be a one-centric character. So that yep. fact that even though not everybody's very excited about Smart Hulk, at least it gives them that opportunity to play mentor to basically, like you said, uh, with She-Hulk, who basically can do everything better than him. So we're going to really find out how, how interesting that dynamic is. And I, I, that part I'm actually looking really forward to in the series. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. You're I wrong. Could, yeah, probably. In the original trailer, didn't we just see at some points just Mark Ruffalo as himself? What do you mean? I don't as Bruce Banner. You mean? Yes. Yeah. No. I don't uh, remember seeing Bruce. He's always been green. There oh no, always, there's, it, there's only there was only one moment where they did that. Um, they did that law commercial in the style of the Ben Kingsley, like the, the show in the '80s, where they're dressed up in the '80s. That was probably the only time when you saw Bruce Banner. But that, but other than that. No, it's it's always been a, a CGI. It's always uh, been he's always been the Hulk. Hulk. He's been he's always been the smart Hulk throughout the entire part of the series. So, yeah. Good. All right. Um, yeah. I mean, and I'd like to to bring Wong into this, um, mm-hmm. to connect some more things. Abomination, and like also you were big. saying, that the. Uh, you, one, you could tell that they're having fun with it, and the Hulk trying to be, you know, smart and mentoring and nurturing, and she just keeps showing him up every moment that she can. No. No. Well, they, they from the from the outset, they have said this is supposed to be Marvel's. You know, it's always been this. Um, Ali that you know, Thor is a is a fantasy in the tradition of Lord of the Rings. When Amer- Captain America and the Winter Soldier is a is a thriller, is a spy thriller. Uh, Captain America, the first uh, Captain America, the first Avenger is a is a historical fiction. This was always meant to be sort of their not necessarily sitcom, but it, 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 this is supposed to be. In the tradition of Ally McBeal, that like yes. Ally McBeal is supposed to be the heavy influence on this, and and you can see it, you can see it in the trailer, and I think even in Dan Slott's original, uh, in his run twenty years ago, he's like, I'm just I'm stealing from Ally McBeal. I want to see, you know, who I want to see show up, um, Awesome Andy. I'm praying they put Awesome Andy in there because I love Awesome Andy. The they in the, in the comics. Awesome Android is a character from the Fantastic Four. He was uh, created by the Mad Thinker, and he's evil. And Halden Holloway gets his hands on the on the Awesome Android robot and turns him into basically an office assistant. And he's Awesome Andy. And it's such a it's such a fun character. He's such a sweet character. He doesn't say anything. Everything is just written on a little chalkboard, and he holds up whatever he's thinking. And and uh, uh, I'm I'm hoping they'll do Awesome Andy, but they might not. Who knows? But I would love to see Awesome Andy. Time, time will tell. Um, I mean, at I this point, know. we really don't know what and will be... And they've said, you know, it's... The, that's the other thing is, you know, we've talked about Wong is going to be in it, Daredevil is going to be in it. You know, they're going to use this... This is kind of what they should have been doing a little bit more with uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is that they're going to toss... We're going to see a couple of... Uh, Abomination. Um, and they've said there are a few others they haven't announced yet who were going to show up and surprise us. I believe. And I'm fine with that. Bring on the surprises. Mm -hmm. I agree. No, I I totally agree. Uh, Other than that, quick... All right, so other than that, switch over to uh, Mr. Grass on Matt. Uh, First, Matt, what, 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 what was your most anticipated thing throughout that entire time? Um, my most anticipated? 
All right, not the most anticipated. What were you like? What were you most excited about? Uh, what what got you really geeked up about in in, in the Marvel panel? Um, well, my most anticipated was seeing the the first take on um, Wakanda Forever, which we got. Oh. Uh, but the thing that which I did not, I knew a little bit about. I didn't think we were going to hear this quickly about was the Daredevil. That really got me pumped. Yeah, that one was interesting, man. Eight, and not only that, we're getting eighteen episodes. It's going to be an eighteen yeah. episode series. Daredevil: Born Again, uh, mm-hmm. with at least Charlie Cox and uh, D'Onofrio reprising we'll their roles. We don't know about anybody else yet. So here's where I think, and maybe I'm wrong. I think this uh, is I think I, I, said, with, with I thought they said Echo episode. is going to be Echo is going to be in it. I think. Well, they're showing up in Echo. They're right. Gonna, they will so there's a very Echo. good chance that Echo I, I could cross over to this, I, too. Because yeah. they announced a couple weeks ago that Daredevil... The, the, the Daredevil news is almost kind of old, because they announced maybe a week or two ago that they were doing it. Oh, yeah. That yes. Frio and Charlie Cox, uh, this, this weekend, they actually gave it a title and whatnot. But I thought Echo was, was brought up mm-hmm. as being in... The, they were going to start in her, and, and that she'll cross over into... Into the Daredevil series, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, I I just wasn't sure if um, at what point were we getting this series? Like, you know, because so many things have we get the announcement, mm-hmm. and then well, you'll get to see it in two to three years. You know, this we got the announcement a few weeks ago, and we're getting it just over a, year, a little over a year. Was well, it's coming out uh, next? year is sore like third quarter forgot uh Where, how they have it labeled how they had that present i was thinking it no it is it is labeled for 24 yeah it's 24 yeah yeah two years um, so uh yeah no yeah, it's coming out spring of next year yes uh no it's spring of uh 24 yeah spring of 24 spring so, 24 so, uh, okay so yeah there we go about two years so no, and I think with 18 episodes, I think maybe this is going to be the way to not only do uh, hopefully establish Daredevil, but maybe a backdoor to reintroduce maybe all the Netflix characters uh, minus Iron Fist. So uh, that's probably with it, and you could do that with an 18 era, 18 episode series. And, and I, I get have a Hippopolis, feeling uh, established. I have a feeling that's what they're trying to do. Yeah, it's going to be a back pause to get everybody in, reintroduced into the MCU proper. Get Luke Cage backing, Jessica Jones, Punisher. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know, Missy Knight, uh, Kali Chung. Yeah. I like how nobody talks about Iron Fist. <laughs> we, He's like Bruno. They, we don't need they, to talk about him. Or maybe they even recast him. Who, who, who honestly knows? But yeah, no, I, I, I totally agree. Uh, I mean, they recast. They recast Bruce Banner. They can. Yeah. They recast. Uh, they recast Rhodey. They recast Bruce Banner. Yeah. I think recasting Iron Fist isn't out of the question. No, I, I, I totally agree on that. Speaking of recasting, uh, going a little out of worry here. Thunderbolts was announced as well. It's big. Um. It's sad because the actor who passed away who played Thunderbolts, Ross, it's like you like you've been waiting for that moment because that's yep. like his team that would started. So it's up it's very upsetting that the man passed though. But uh no, we're getting the Thunderbolts and that isn't that to end phase five? That was yes. To end the mark of phase five when they're moving forward. Yes. Um yeah, that's that's gonna be intriguing. Um I, I, that that's definitely going to be intriguing, and we already kind of have an idea with US Eight, but I think it's going to be led by um, Julia Louis Dreyfus. Exactly, yeah. she's going to be leading that team because that's what they've been building and that's what they've been setting up for. So, uh, yeah, we're going to see how how that all how that all stems up and how that all gets built too. So, um, yeah, I think that's going to be uh, I think that's totally going to be big. Um, there were, I, I, I'll also say Wakanda Forever was... Yeah, I wanted to step back and just talk about that trailer yeah. for a moment. Um, honestly, uh, when I first watched that trailer, it's it, it was incredible how 
Um, it was a brilliant teaser trailer. It really yes. was personally to me. I, it was just so beautifully moved, and it 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 seems like because you know since you know you know it was the past with the chat with Bosman, and you know the the incredible undertaking that you know Kevin Feige came out and said that we're not going to recast this character. Uh, this character does die with him. Right. Uh, was uh, in, in a respectful and an incredible moment um, in terms of how they're going to approach the story. And I thought they hit all the beats so perfectly well. I I was impressed with the, using the music choice of Bar Marley's, uh, 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 you know, was was wonderfully well done. And for it for that music choice to blend in with Kendrick Lamar's will be all right to hit yep. that perfectly while it hit the crescendo of the trailer was so masterfully well done. And then you know with Angela Bassett presenting that line, the only line in that film which really just kind of hit you, following up with the beautiful um, the beautiful uh, picture of Chadwick Boseman after that. It was such an incredible teaser uh, trailer um, done, and it was so amazing too because at it, at some parts you kind of forget that they also introduced the big baddie in Namor. Yes, who clearly that's is, gonna be exciting. Um, you know, who's clearly let's be honest, he's he's a they haven't really said mutant, but he's clearly they're gonna met it, it, which is another interesting backdoor channel of. Maybe Marvel introducing mutants little by little. They're quietly introducing the mutants once. Uh, well, yeah, they've been. Yeah, quietly. And, and been I've been the Professor X. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like there's one that I'm missing. Well, there was the the tease at the end of the uh, Miss Marvel. Right. The, the, Ms. Marvel. The, the quick line there. There was Charles Xavier showing up in multiverse. Um, Yes, and then and then right now this would there was the tease in uh, Wandavision, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like they're dropping the so quality many dropping hints, hints, particularly this year. There's been a number of hints, um, more like it, more like seeds. They've been planting seeds, seeds throughout the entire entire MCU on that. So I thought. No, but yeah, no, the, it's just such a beautifully well done trailer. And, um, it, you know, it's, and, you know, it, and what, what was so fascinating, and, and, and I went back to actually look at, um, like other trailers that were released, like Endgame and, and, um, um, Infinity War in either trailers. I don't know, and maybe I, I could be wrong. But, and I, I checked out all the other trailers and teasers. This I feel like this was kind of the first time that M, that um, that Marvel Studios actually credits a director. I don't. I could be wrong, but it was the only. This is the only trailer where they actually show they credit Ryan Coogler, directed by Ryan Coogler. In a teaser trailer, because they haven't. They, they I, again. I went back to look at Infinity War, like the bigger trailers, and they didn't. They don't credit like the Russo brothers. They don't credit anything like they buy the Russo brothers. Thor. I feel. Did they do it for Taka Watiti? I don't think they did for Taka Watiti, but no, the original. The, the original Thor, Thor that um, uh, Branagh. Yeah, I thought Kenneth they said Branagh, created like during the trailer. They said created by directed by Kenneth Branagh. I thought I might be wrong, but I because I, I it was just such a I, I remember it being a huge announcement because it was kind of a weird announcement. Mm -hmm. I was like, really, the 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 Shakespeare guy is doing. <laughs> Sorry, people people went one of two directions. Either either people went the guy from Harry Potter or the Shakespeare guy, and the, and the people who went mm -hmm. oh, the Shakespeare guy oh. kind of went, oh, actually, that's a cool choice. And then people who just knew him from Harry Potter went, Gilderoy Lockhart directing a movie? What? what? No, no, he, he knows. He's he, done other stuff. You, yeah. Go on IMDb and check out this man's credits. Yeah. Yeah, he, he's... Uh, I, I feel like Kenneth Branagh might have been 
I'm watching it now. I'm I'm watching with the the sound off. So uh, you know, if they verbally say it, I not that I'm aware of. Uh, but so far, it's just a lot of. I mean, it's dialogue. It's showing scenery. All right. Well, maybe it wasn't him. Um, but it's uh, yeah. I was trying to even think like maybe for Captain Marvel did they? No, I couldn't even tell you who grouped Captain Marvel. So I not that I'm a. I think you are right, Isaac, in that. Yeah. That they never. I'm uh, I'm actually looking at the Thor trailer now. Like you guys said, they've never no. I've I think this is really kind of the probably the first time of all the films that they credit a director. In it. Again, I could be wrong. Someone will let me know. But yeah, I've I've I, again I I think. Like I, 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 again, I went back to check even at least the bigger ones, and you know, you would think they would have gotten like the Russo brothers would have been totally been credited for what they've done in, in in the past phases, but no, it's so so. E- either that though, one, you know what? It was a wonderful teaser. Honestly, if it were me, if it was Marvel, I would have just saved my my marketing dollars and just leave that there and wait till the November because I don't think any. I don't need to know anything else until no. November drop. That was just a great teaser. And kind of like Endgame, where they yeah. had they did not really have to. Uh, they didn't have to show anything off in Endgame. Mm. Uh, uh, you could do that with this movie. Yeah. You you you, uh, you don't. You honestly don't. And you know, like I don't know if like you if you had opportunity to even watch that panel, man. It was just such a a great panel. Um, it was a very emotional panel too, man. You know, because again, them seeing seeing it the first time was just amazing. And even introducing the guy that's playing uh, Namor, which you know, now they're introducing another style of culture into the Marvel uh, universe. Uh, you also got to you also got to remember was, Namor is one it's of fantastic. the fantastic. Namor is one of the first Marvel characters. He's one of the originals. You know, like before yeah. Marvel was Marvel, there was Namor the Submariner. He was one of the like he's he's as old as Captain America in terms of in terms of characters. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So that 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 sort of adds a little something to it. Oh yeah, no, and you know, and I've and from what and he's like the almost he can sometimes he's a baddie, sometimes he's an anti-hero. He he. I, basically, at the end of the day, he's always going to align with the needs of Atlantis, no matter what. Right. That's always right. been his character. So it, it's it's going to be an interesting journey to see where Nemo goes through through this right now. Right now, he's basically the big baddie that's basically coming to basically attack. Maybe who knows? We don't really know the story, but clearly has an issues with, with Wakanda in some form or matter. That's going to trigger off some major, like major events moving on to uh, phase five. But uh, no, this is this is this is going to be an awesome. And you know, it's also very interesting too, man. This is it's just watching this culture and to kind of now see mostly like a all woman led cast really going to to carry this mantle with the, the with Angela Basket with Luke Peter Yango. It's it's going to be a really amazing to see like powerful black women being carried in this whole cast in this film mostly throughout this entire film. So I'm I'm just yeah yeah. I'm saying bring it on. Yeah, it's great. I think it's just a, um, an amazing trailer and an amazingly well done. But yeah. and I think and I think your other lead in there is that the both of these characters, Black Panther and Namor, lead into Fantastic Four a little bit because that's where. I mean, Namor's first official Marvel appearance is Fantastic Four. Black Panther yeah. also is a Fantastic Four character who was was first introduced in in Fantastic Four. So yeah. it's, you know they've got there's some ties there to some well, stuff. That's, that we haven't uh, seen yet. let's bring it back to She Hulk as well. That at some point she was part of the Fantastic Four as well. Hulky was part of the Fantastic Four. She was always a substitute when Ben Grimm was when Ben isn't. Yeah, he's not a part of the team. Yeah, he was always a substitute. Yeah. 
Um, and on top of that, let's not forget the uh, the character that's going to lead into Ironheart for um, an upcoming Riri. Disney Plus series Riri is Williams. being introduced in this that's big too. movie as well. And I have to say, the the poster that they released for this um, at Comic Con, uh, the all black one with just the uh, was the helmet a little bit and, of the the uh, armor, the Black yeah. Panther armor, is just beautiful. It's it's no. simple, you know, so simple, so understated, but so powerful in its image. I agree, I agree. Totally looking forward to that. But you do quickly see someone gets the the Black Panther armor. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. So and, it's uh, not that. They're not recasting it. Someone is picking up the mantle, but they're not recasting the character. But that was the plan all along, from my understanding. Even bef before Chadwick uh, passed away, when they were working on the original treatment to the script. Um, because apparently that does happen at some point in the comics where he steps away and someone else, who we will remain nameless at this point in time, uh, takes over as, as All protector. it takes is we really, I mean, Nine out of ten, it's leading to her, to who takes over. Yep. Um, but right now, you know, this again, this is the MCU, and they can kind of change up uh, the the stories up a little bit. They have that license to do that. Right. Um, so, yeah, no, I think it's, either way, I I thought it was is so weird because especially how it start the trailer starts off. I'm sitting there or standing there watching it in complete silence out of respect because it just feels like it, it just had that kind of weight to it. Yeah. No, it, it was just beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. That's a fantastic trailer. Um, uh, fantastic teaser. Um, other things too, um, in, in the panel too, I thought was, uh, was big is they also announced, uh, we're going to get a, we're going to get two Avenger movies. Yeah. Avenger movies are coming back, not for a while, but they're coming back. Yeah, um, one of the time, uh, actually, two. The, the, oh. the first one that I uh, was big on, the Kang Dynasty. Yeah, that's a cool name. Let's that's just let's just cool mention quickly, name. Wakanda Forever cool. is ending uh, phase, phase four. four. We'll end phase four. Yeah. And Quantum is Quantum Mania starts phase five. But yes, um, speaking of Kang. Yeah, the the king uh, king dynasty. It, it's going to be another one that it's it's king dynasty, and mm -hmm. then if I remember correctly, is followed by uh, secret wars. Secret isn't wars, it? which they're kind of backing back. To, you know, part one, part two thing almost feels like with the yeah, which which I believe there's going to be a movie in between both of them. Uh, so, so, like, I think what they also did with uh, Infinity War and Endgame, I think they 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 had. Uh, yes. They put Ant-Man Ant 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 yeah. Ant and the Wasp was in between both of them um, during that time. So, uh, no, but I, I know that Secret Wars is a, is, is a big Marvel event, too. And that's going to be really interesting how they're going to how they're going to how that's going to play out at the end, too, you know, which is going to be interesting. Along with the fact that we will eventually have the Fantastic Four introduced at that time. So. Uh, no, yeah. So I, I, the fact that we got the names for that too is also big. Um, uh, another big, uh, you know, another the fact that Kang is going to be played by Jonathan Majors, I thought was a, just an excellent choice. Um, which I really always have to admire a guy like Kevin Feige. He really knows how to go after really up and coming young actors and get them early, <laughs> so they know yeah. they can. They can play these series for another like ten or fifteen years when when needed, um, and still be useful and young. So I'm just excited for Jonathan Majors. I love them in Lovecraft Country, man. A, a brilliant actor, a brilliant young actor that's coming up. So the fact that he's going to be around, basically terrorizing the entire MCU in 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 this monumental phase, I think that's awesome. I think that's totally pumped. So. All right. So with the there's between the Avenger movies, there'll be two movies, mm -hmm. two unannounced movies. So Phase Six, which is where we're going to get the Avengers, uh, King Dynasty, and Avengers Secret Wars, 
only three movies out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine projects. I'm going to state it as projects. Um, so, because some of them are, some of those are going to be television shows. Here. Some of them will probably be Disney Plus series, mm-hmm. and they're they're keeping those close to the vest at the moment. Uh, where uh, Fantastic Four, which we were told about a few years ago, uh, finally have a date of November. Uh, November of 24. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a movie before it. There is, or there's there's something before it. There's five pro. There's five projects after it before we get Kang Dynasty. Mm-hmm. Then we got two more projects, and then that wraps up with the Secret Wars. Um, and let's also not forget about the already previously mentioned pro- uh, projects that, which you would think they would have already just like, hey, reminder that we still have the Marvels coming out. We didn't announce Marvel Zombies, which is going to also be um, what R rated. I think is it going to? It's a series that's going to be mature. Like, they, yeah, they, they mentioned they, but mentioned, they that. mentioned that Marvel Zombies is coming at some point. That is not. Yeah. That was not mentioned at all in any of this, though. That's what I'm saying. Like the and they and on top of all the other stuff, um, uh, Armor Wars. Remember that was mentioned a long time ago. Yeah, that's something they I've been waiting they, for. They, they have not thrown that. They didn't. Even, they didn't like give us like a either either details on that. So yeah, there's still like a lot of stuff that that even... was mentioned even before that is still going to fit in within these couple of phases. And strangely enough, um, something else that wasn't mentioned during the Marvel presentation, it was mentioned, this actually I think was mentioned Friday, was uh, season two of What If. Yeah, they didn't bring that up either. Um, I think that was mentioned Friday that they confirmed season two of it and it's coming next year, I believe. Mm -hmm. But strangely enough, wasn't put in with all this, even though we know season one of What If is part of the MCU. Yeah. Yeah. Also, uh, we also forgot to mention, they actually finally gave this entire, uh, I guess, chapter uh, a name, the Multiverse Saga. Is it, yeah. It, it, which is also, I um, mean, we, we need to uh, bring that forth. So, yeah, now that everything gets a, a title. A title name, which is good. Also, yeah, looking title. F- also looking forward to Blade. Much of, um, was uh, looking forward to Blade. See how they're going to handle that. You know, although that's not going to be till what next year, November. November third of next year. So yeah, you got yeah. a year wow. and a couple months. Even though like we, you know, he he already kind of made his appearance in the end of Eternals. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, that's like wow. That's that's gonna be my long. Yeah, I think they're gonna aren't they're, they're gonna start shooting that soon. I, I, which they, I, they got it because they, yeah, times are ticking. Yeah, I, um, I know. So yeah, it, 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 it's crazy. But yeah, but yeah. Other than that, I think those were the bigger, the to me the more more wor- noteworthy moments that uh, that stuck out. Um, Personally, for me, uh, I know Guardians of the Galaxy 3 was also uh, well mentioned, too. I also heard that uh, that trailer was just as emotionally impactful as the Wakanda Forever. Yeah, you, get, I, I, you got to see Adam told. Warlock. Yeah, um, but they didn't, they didn't show that trailer. I guess they didn't want to show two back-to-back trailers that kind of had the same tone. Yeah, they didn't release it yet. Yeah. But, but yeah, yeah, and they also uh, showed the trailer to um, Ant Man and the Wasp Quantum Man as well. So there were more trailers that were shown that we didn't even get. And I think they also teased uh, Secret Invasion, the, the, yep. the series. I think they There's, also showed a little bit of a some some work they've done on that as well. So there's there was a, a lot more ability the that they, they may have shown them at Comic Con, but they may show more they may release it during d23 i mean that's always a possibility i'm not saying i don't know anything but um which is what um when next month august or september september i think okay so that's not not shocking yeah 
they're gonna hold all, all that to their to, to their vest. So, yeah, no. Uh, like, again, and honestly, I think it's great that uh, Marvel came back to San Diego Comic Con because like easily they could have easily done this at D23 and be like, hey, you're gonna come all to our stuff. But I think in a weird way and like kind of respectful to the geeks and the fans and to the community just to come back to Hall H and to be able to show all of their goodies knowing that they have a lot more to show i think was was yeah uh, uh, satisfying um um although i also want to kind of touch on what leonard said i mean it's a lot of marvel products being thrown at you and within two years <laughs> and, and i'm gonna be honest with you i'm not excited about half of it because it's so much yeah. thrown at, so at, at one time mm-hmm. i'm gonna be honest that's fair yeah no no it's it's fair. it's a lot of the things i saw that I was like, that was okay. there's one or two that i'm excited about and the rest of it's like well it's that's three years why get excited about it now i don't mm-hmm. care you know build it up for me don't yeah and i i <sighs> I honestly think what this was, this was a, a cover, a, it was a response. Um, it was a response from Kevin Feige to the fans who've been all saying now since, since Endgame, basically, is where are we going next? Where is this all heading? Where are we going? To, we don't have a direction. We don't yeah, have a direction. Very said, Be patient. Yeah. There is a direction. Be patient. You, it will all come. You will learn out. You will learn soon. You'll learn soon. Now we're expecting we'll learn soon from the movies, but I guess he, you know, he knew at one of these conventions he was going mm-hmm. to be releasing this, and then they chose San Diego Comic Con to just kind of drop the, you know, come out and just blow the doors open. I'm saying not only do we have here's the next year, which is usually what they did. Okay, here's the next phase. Here's the next. Here's kind of a lo- real far extended look of where we are heading with all this um and and to be fair uh you know you know with the pandemic the pandemic really caused a lot of issues well, yes. so i think we i think in terms of where leonard is coming for where you see so much a lot of that content was supposed to be evenly spread out now you're so that also played a big part into that as well I think that people have to also remember. But yeah, I also agree with them. And again, it's still at the end of the day, that's a lot of content being shoved within a two, three year span that's going to be constantly coming at you, you know. So, uh, you know, so, uh, yeah, who is that guy? I don't know. Who's that that, that person? Matt, Matt Gresson, what are you doing? So, but yeah, other than that, um, but uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. At, um, other than that, um, yeah, in terms of the, of, of the information. Um, yeah, it, it's some of the stuff. I mean, a lot of it's stuff that we we knew about. We knew was coming along, um, particularly over the next year and two years, because this goes up to twenty four is when phase uh, five goes. So. If you look at the list, it's it's stuff that we knew about. And some of it, I'm looking forward to it. Some of it, I'm not. Quantumania. Oh, I, I'm curious to see where that goes, because that's going to be the next appearance of mm-hmm. the Kang character, which is going to be moving us forward. Secret Invasion. Seems cool. It's, you know, it's Nick Fury series. Why not? Guardians of the Galaxy. Enough said. Echo. We'll see. You know, I, I wasn't as attached to her character in in the Hawkeye series to, to say, oh, I, I'm looking forward to... Oh, Echo, I'm actually... Echo is one of the few things I am looking forward to. Okay. I okay. liked her. I'm actually excited for Echo, too, honestly. And again, because now with that tie-in with... Uh, even with Daredevil and, and, you know, with the Kingpin coming back... Um, I think that's supposed to be very exciting. I'm actually looking forward to it because in, in the comic books, aren't they? Don't they have a? I don't know they're even going to go that route. Don't they have like a romantic relationship? I think with Daredevil, I think has a relationship with Echo and oh, with point. Echo. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't follow Daredevil or Echo well enough in the comics to. Gotcha. You know. Yeah, I was gonna say because I think and I think maybe that and I think maybe because I don't follow Echo in the comics, that's one of the the reasons I'm excited for it. I don't know. But I, 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 say, I, that, that's, I thought she was an interesting character. I thought she was a complex character. 
Mm-hmm. Yes. I was, I was eager to see her story move forward. Like, yeah, I, I love I love when a bad guy isn't really bad or isn't, mm-hmm. you know. There's more layers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I love a good layered bad guy. And she's so wonderfully layered. And, and you know, she's really not a bad person or a bad character. You know, she's not evil. Gosh. Brings up another one that... Uh, is on my lower expectations is the Agatha series. As much as I enjoyed that character from before, it's like, all right. Um, yeah. <laughs> she's she's another Fantastic Four character. Yeah. Yeah. I'm she like a baby. It's kind of like the, like the whole their, uh, Thor thing. Mm-hmm. Are we going back to that well too much? Uh, she's there. Not, not there's a. Uh, Sorry, it's like 95 degrees and I can't, my words are failing me. Um, yeah. I want to say mistress, and I know that's not right. No. <laughs> no. no. Hey, that, that's the After Dark series. Yeah, no, she's, she's uh, yeah, she's hired to take care of Franklin. She's hired to take care of, she's a caretaker for Franklin. For a okay, yeah. yeah, like a, a nurse, may, um, right. nanny. Right, because he's because he what the, what they don't know is that he's got powers and she's a, the the only reason she's able to kind of rein him in is because she also has powers. Yeah, yeah. Because like Franklin's like the, like the power, most powerful out of the Fantastic Four, like, really, yeah. like in terms of his power sets. Yeah, not pretty much. Yeah, and you know again, you know uh, Catherine Hahn was fantastic with playing that character but uh but you know going back to uh, uh other matt's point you know again it's a, it's it's a lot of shows that you know uh, you know do I, you may not there's, there's, there's a other ones i'm more excited than, over those and, ones. Yeah, yeah that's the problem so uh yeah that other than that that's really pretty much it <laughs> in terms of my excitement with the, with the marvel i'm with, excited uh, i'm excited about x-men 97 yeah yeah, that, that's that, another I'm one they really don't have on this about. list. That's gonna be really fun. And I wonder. I'm sure brought that up. Yeah, I wanted to bring that up, but glad that someone else did. Yeah, and and I I wonder, and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna throw it out here because it could be absolutely nothing. How uh, we had the animated series of What If, mm-hmm. and we thought nothing of it, and then they pull it in. What's to stop them from making the animated series? series of 90s x-men 97 canon and, and pulling canon. it in yeah nothing stopping them at this point nothing stopping them i think it would be i think it would be unwise to do that i think it should i think x-men 97 i think the the 90s series should stand on its own two feet and be its own thing but I, i'm just mm-hmm. putting it out there yeah, and, I, and you and you made a you made a when we were talking last night you made a a, 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 a a, a good argument for for not necessarily why but but how you came to that conclusion or how you came to that that way of thinking which is valid but uh i think it would be unwise for them to do that i think x-men the animated x-men should just stand on it. the same way that any of their animated series just kind of you know spider-man uh, uh spider-man and um, oh that's another one that they met they they announced freshman so spider-man freshman year yeah, well, yeah. There you go. With any of the any of the animated stuff, kind of you know, the Avengers, Earth's Mightiest Heroes stands on its own. And yeah, uh, what if is the exception as far as as Marvel right, animation just, being it, part of? Because it was it was acknowledged that what if was part. You know, well, this is what if MCU. What if you know, and it, and it was going to be uh, Halle Atwell was going to voice Captain Carter, and Chadwick Boseman was going to voice. Black Panther, and as much as they could, they were going to get either the actors or soundalikes to play those characters, and then it would definitely tie into the Marvel Cinematic Universe or take its cues from the anima- the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Whereas X Men is taking its cues from the '90s X Men animated series, and it's best to just kind of leave that. Yeah, no, I I agree on that as its own media. I agree on that. Um... So we, we time will tell, but that is all. That's fall of next year, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Oh, that's fair. Also, another thing not Marvel related: Gargoyles is coming back, so I'm pumped for that. 
as a as a comic book. Oh, it's a comic book. It's a comic book. This is this yeah. is the this is really irritated me over the weekend. Is it keeps getting, and like everything I've seen, every headline has said it's a new season of Gargoyles, and then you it's click on that book. headline and read the article, and it's a comic book. Dynamite Comics is doing, uh, they're doing Gargoyles, and I think they're doing Dark. Wing as well. I think they've got the license to do Darkwing and and Gargoyles. But yeah, yeah it's yeah. it is not gar- it is not an extra series of Gargoyles, the animated series. It's a it's a comic book that will continue the story. Honestly, sorry, to, I'm, sorry I'm, to break you there. Uh, you know, yeah. You just, I just feel like that 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 would be such a great movie to do, man. Is that to do they, a live There was talks version. about that for so, years. Yeah. About trying to to bring that into the into the movies, um, and they just they never yeah. hammered it out properly. Um, I I think I think Gargoyles had so much potential to be so much more. Yeah, because back in like the nineties, it's like you know it's it, it came around the time where everybody was trying to duplicate the. The Ninja Turtles success, so like it's just like that pattern, and yeah, Gargoyles but it, but was it up came there. A good, it came a good eight or nine years after Ninja Turtles, which mm-hmm. I think kind of helped it. And it was, I, the the full story of it was, um, there was Disney Television Animation. Mm-hmm. They, it was, and up until that point, it had all been sort of light adventure. It had been Ducktales, it had been Tailspin, it had been Gummy Bears, it had been Rescue Rangers, it had been Darkwing. Um, Goof Troop was the first that was considered a sitcom, uh, and yeah. then Gargoyles was originally. It was supposed to be a comedy. It was supposed to be these sort of stone statues that came. They were they were sort of mischief makers. They weren't heroes. They were they were little. They were literally like little, almost more like gremlins. That yep. came to life and caused trouble, and it would be a comedy. And it w- they were developing it. It wasn't working. It wasn't working. It wasn't working. Greg Weissman, uh, Weissman was, yep. mm-hmm. was friends with the director on Beauty and the Beast, and just to clear his head, he went over to to visit uh, on on Beauty and the Beast, and he saw the dailies from Beauty and the Beast, and he kind of went, you know, the the tone of Beauty and the Beast. I think I think it was literally watching the scene with her in the uh, Beast saving her from the wolves, I think, was specifically the scene, but that don't quote me on that. Really? But he saw he saw the the dailies from from Beauty and the Beast, and he's like, oh, oh, this is what my show should be. It should be this tone. And he went back and he pitched it to whoever his creative partner was as a as a drama. This should be a drama. And suddenly it took them off in a in a whole other direction, and that was the creation of gargoyles. Yeah. Um, and it came as a, at a time when, you know, really it was it was sort of a shift in in the Disney afternoon. You know, Magone and uh, Jim Magone and Tad Stones had kind of moved on yeah. and were doing other things. Um, and it was, in my opinion, the last of the really good. If you want, you know, like they 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 kind of went from doing Darkwing to doing Bonkers yeah. or Shookums and Meat. Or, you know, even even Aladdin, and, and Aladdin was actually very well done. It was well produced, but it was kind of, because it was based on a movie, it wasn't, it lacked the the yeah. sort of creativity yeah. of something like Dale's, Tailspin or DuckTales. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Tatsa, it was, was just was basically, he was given this, and they, they had good writing to it, but it was just it was just following through on, on the movie. Yeah. Um, yeah, so they um, the we also got Quack too. Pack. Yeah. What they were yeah. doing, and they were doing the, and they were doing the TV, the, the, DVD releases for Aladdin too, so they were they couldn't you know every episode of Aladdin had to end where it began. They they couldn't Aladdin and Jasmine couldn't get married because they might get married in a thing later on. Yeah, you couldn't really evolve the characters too much. Whereas Gargoyles, you could you could do that. You could take them and, and go different f- places. But then after a while, Greg range, Weissman yeah. left. Uh, after I think it's like the second season, and they had another showrunner who went off in a whole other direction with it and all the stuff with Avalon and the show just kind of went off the rails. And even Greg, Greg Weissman has come back has come out and said, ignore that. None of that is canon. None of that actually happened. Let's forget after, season two. Just stick to season after one. After I left, it's done. <laughs> you yeah. know? So it's, it's, such, I mean, it it's was a great show that went off the rails. 
Yeah, after what? Because they only had three seasons, unfortunately. Yeah. So, uh, no. Um, but I guess, you know, we're getting it back in comic book form. So who knows? You know? Yeah, also, you have to keep in mind when it came out, too, it was ten, almost 10 years after Gummy Bears. So you figure who, the kids that started off with Gummy Bears are yeah. 10 years older now. You, you had that built in mature audience. I hadn't even put it in, in that context. I'd never even thought of it in that context before. But you're right. I was I was six, I think six or I was about seven when Gummy Bears came out. And I was 16, 17 when Gargoyles came out. Yeah. Wow. And it and it was but it was, but you but you was also something what you said, Isaac, that it was it was Ninja Turtles. But I always felt it was kind of like Ninja Turtles with heart. You know, yep. there's so much more heart to gargoyles than there was to to, to Ninja Turtles. No, I mean, it was a more Ninja Turtles like, was a commercial. Let's yeah, call it, it, it was Ninja it was Turtles. A, the original Ninja Force. Turtles cartoon series was a commercial, mm -hmm. whereas Gargoyles wasn't a commercial. It was it was a it was a TV series, and it had a lot of heart and a lot of warmth to it. And, it was uh, a, and a lot of you mature had great tones to voice it cast, well, which was fantastic. Oh yeah, great. Oh god, voice casting is, is legend. Keith Davis' voice is so legend, man. Even, even, even the, yes, dude. Even and, uh, and, and um, Ed Asner. You so can't Ed Asner. Asner. I mean, oh, he put Ed Asner in anything, and it's Hudson. as a voice actor. Forget yeah. it. Forget it. He was so good in that role. And then, and then, the, literally, just half the cast of Star Trek. Just keep throwing yes. Star Trek actors at it. God. Yeah, but they all did brilliant in it. Yeah, they were. They were fantastic. And, uh, and what's her name? Perry Perry Gilpin from from Frasier was in it too. She played yeah. she played uh, Commander Riker's wife. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, well, the, the kind of that dual role because um, she she was uh, um she was she was Xanatos's wife. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fox. Yes. Fox. 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 God, it's Fox. been so long. Fox and Janie. Yes. Game. That that probably was when they started time traveling. Um, John Riles Davies. I mean, the list is just like the who's who. I mean, yeah, they had. I, I mean, they had some really good talent. I mean, on Disney Animation, always had some good talent. You got you yeah. Alan Young and Paul Winchell and and Tress McNeil and June Foray and. Whoever else, Sally Struthers, but then you look at the Gargoyles cast and it's just, it's stellar. It's a stellar cast. I'm actually looking at the cast. Tim Curry actually had some yeah, yeah, with yeah. Dr. Anton. Yeah. Tim Curry, was in, Tim Curry was in Darkwing too. Oh, awesome. Yeah. No, this, it, was, it was in a stellar cast of voice acting, which is really, really good. Um, but, uh, but no, oh man, it, it, I just feel like it, it's such a missed opportunity. If you if you want to talk about like adding even more content that's non like the, like Marvel or yeah. like that 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 right there that right there should have been you know but, yeah I mean announced. But you back know, then, fourteen year old little me is coming out. How can I make this a role playing game? Because you just you have the mythology, you have the character. There's the a board game. Of characters. There is the uh, um. Yeah, I saw that there was a board game. It's yeah. a Target. It's exclusive to Target. I've got it. I haven't played it yet, but I should. Let me know. Um, okay. Because um, I, I made sure whenever I, was, um, I had the opportunity to get season one, so I, I did buy season one of it because it, it's just... I keep, meaning to, I keep meaning to go back on Disney Plus and watch it. It's one of the things like, oh, I've got Disney Plus. I can watch Gargoyles now, and I haven't. But I yeah, that's what I'm gonna do tonight. Yeah, it's oh, you know what? I'll have the boys watch it tomorrow. Um because it's supposed to storm tomorrow. It, it's it is such a brilliant, brilliant season and uh series and how we will go from San Diego Comic Con to to waxing poetically on gargoyles. We should just do a whole show on gargoyles at some we point. We really should. I'd be down for that. You've gotten, dude, you've gotten you've gotten uh, stones and and uh, you reach out, man. You should make some. But they weren't involved in this. Uh, I mean, Greg, I could. Oh, Greg Weisman, reach out to find Greg Weisman. All right, I demand it. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're no. We should we should do a whole uh, gargoyles thing. I I, I even could... if, even if we just do like we did with Ducktales and do a top five favorite episodes. 
Or yeah. each of us take a season and talk about. We can draw sh- short. Short straw gets to, gets to watch the last season. <laughs> uh, <laughs> How about just favorite characters in it too? I mean, sure. Oh, there's so many great characters. That's characters. Uh, at least the last season. At least the last season, you can say Brent Spiner was Puck. You, you yeah. Can say that. Uh, uh, we've we've drifted away from STC. Yes, we have. Yes. yes. You know what? Uh, I'll I'll, dr- I'll bring us back because uh, this is tough to talk. But uh, the, uh, the this morning they actually Hasbro posted pictures of their their new She Hulk action figure, which will be based on the on um, they're doing like a whole wave of of Marvel TV. Uh, they're gonna do Kate Bishop, and they're gonna do Moon Knight, and they're gonna do She Hulk, and uh, I don't remember who the others are. Um, but the, it looks really, really good. Oh, I, I am so to psyched to see Tatiana Marzla on, on in this character. She just like you were saying about Ruffalo having fun. She looks like she's having fun. She yeah. she again putting on a great performance uh, between the motion capture and just you know the in person stuff. And yeah, she's such, um, she's such a terrific, terrific actor. Actress. She is. Um, the stuff that she pulls off uh, is, 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 is it's incredible, amazing. Like when I heard that that she like again going back to how Kevin Feige goes after top upcoming talent and you know Melanzi has she's been around and she's done great things in other stuff. So when I heard that they cast her. To play as She Hulk, I was like, yeah, dude, they got it right, dude. She's gonna bring it, com- comedic wise and acting wise. Like, yeah, they totally, totally. I mean, how many it. times was she nominated for Orphan Black? And she was also good with another HBO show. Uh, show uh, Pen. Oh, was it? Uh, I forgot it. I forgot the name of the show. Um, it was on HBO, but um, it was a drama, a short little drama. Uh, something. Uh, it's. It's gonna bother me. Hold on, I gotta find out what. Uh... Oh, let's see. There's the Perry Mason thing. There's stronger. Correct. Perry, Perry, uh, Perry Mason. Perry Mason. Thank you. She was in the troll. She voiced some stuff in troll. The Troll Hunter series. Mm-hmm. Destroyers. Um. But just to give it, uh, just a quick wrap up of the things that are announced in, in particular. So we had the. Uh, Daredevil Born Again. This is no particular order. Uh, the, uh, found the uh, first trailer and look at Wakanda Forever. Uh, Thunderbolts. The Multiverse Saga, which is what, you know, the overgoing title. Avengers Secret Wars. Avengers Kang Dynasty. Fantastic Four gets a date. Captain America New World Order. Um, Agatha Covenant of Chaos. Iron Heart. Blade, Loki Season 2, Echo, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, uh, Secret Invasion, She-Hulk. Um, I think that, that touches on just about... Did you, did you say the Marvels? Oh, no, I did mention the Marvels. 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 Um, the Marvel Zombies uh, television Series was but wasn't part of this. And was never part Ant-Man, of it, Quantum Mania, Quantum, Quantum Mania. Mania. Quantum Keep on wanting to call it Quantum Mania Bugaloo. Um, yeah. So we, we they covered Should've a, been called a Boogaloo. lot. Should have been Quantum Mania Bugaloo. That'd been great. <laughs> I, I think that would have worked a little better. Quantum Mania Bugaloo. 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 Yep. Yeah, Quantum Mania Bugaloo. Ant-Man Bugaloo. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> waka waka. Ah. Um, uh, yeah, so quite a lot coming out. Uh, we, uh, it, it's, it's, it's a feast of riches. Um, we have no reason to distrust yet any of this stuff coming is, are we going to be excited about some projects more than others? Yes. Um, are we going to hopefully be happy, surprised by the ones that we're not as excited about? I think so. And I, I think uh, it, it's it's a lot of good things coming, and we shall we shall see where it leads us. But at least now everyone knows there is. An, why would anyone doubt Feige? Uh, there is a direction. There is an overall plan. He gave us a lot to look forward to, 
and still told us a lot of there's a lot of things that he didn't tell us yet and for obviously very good reasons so we shall see strangely enough did not mention eternals too um but oh i don't think that movie needs a sequel to be honest i hope that movie doesn't get a sequel even though i know what uh silver uh silver fox is about what's uh um oh the black knight no not the black knight i'm talking about the other character that was introduced uh puck? that's not puck not but um something fox yeah firefox no, nah, it's no. not Firefox. I know he... that 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 is a poor browser service that's been dead. That's a <laughs> uh, but you know exactly who I'm talking. I I about. know exactly. It, it's it's that that singer Harry Styles character. Yeah. Harry Styles character. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, yeah, I wasn't thrilled on that. Um, <laughs> but it, yeah, whatever. Uh, who am I to judge? Um, it's. Star Fox, Star Fox. Star Fox, thank you. Um, that could easily lead into other things that doesn't have to involve Eternals 2, which would be kind of hard concerning the shape that the Eternals were in by the end of the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, these characters will show up again at some point, but in what capacity and in what, we don't know. So, uh, yeah, this... Uh, we we have a lot to look forward to, a lot we still don't know. Um, and speaking of things not know, so I guess this would be a good point to talk about the uh, the announcement. This is, if anybody else has anything is, they want to bring up. No. Are you going to tell oh. them that this is the last episode of the Disney Marvel's podcast? This is going to be the last episode of the Disney Marvel's podcast, yes. Uh, this is uh, been some time. I've been checks. Huh? We get severance checks. <laughs> uh, no, because oh. I don't get a check. Um, it is something I've I've been putting a lot of thought to, and um, it, it's I've had a, several discussions with people and, and been talking to people for for a while of of what to do. And uh, I've come to the conclusion it's not easy for me to say that this will be the final episode of Disney Marvel's podcast. That being said, join us next week for WD Magic Cast. We're not going away, we are changing names. Um, we will be WD Magicast, the Mouse, the Marvels, the Galaxy, and Beyond. Um, it is the show needs a new identity to grow, and this is going to be our new identity. It's going to be the same show as before. Um, no one's leaving the show that I know of. Uh, I'm not, you know, you will still in my powers you will still find the show in the same feed that you are are seeing things now all the stuff will be archived either all the previous shows all 180 i forget what number we're on at 189 episodes 190 episodes will still be there um they i will going to be putting a little uh blurb in front of them explaining that you know these are the archive of the show please find the new show at uh, WD Magic Cast going forward. Social media and within this next week, you will start seeing me switching it over to the new uh, information. We'll be working on a new logo, uh, courtesy of our man Isaac here. We'll be, uh, I'll be torturing with ideas and saying, no, how about this? No, blue, purple, no, bigger, smaller. Um, it's it is a combination we <laughs> we have all um, come together as a family to to come up with this. And, You're not uh, my real father. <laughs> that hurts. <laughs> not the mama. Not the mama. You're not my um, real father. 
So yeah, no, it, it's 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 a good thing. It is is a good thing. Uh, it is not a goodbye. It's just the next chapter for the for the show. So, um, that being said, gentlemen, thank you for joining me and discussing uh, San Diego Comic Con. Thank you for having us. Always a pleasure. Thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. Always. And uh, we'll be talking soon under uh, the new name. Yay! (laughs) Well, there you have it, folks. What did you think of San Diego Comic-Con? Let us know. Join the conversation on our social media, facebook.com slash group slash Disney Marvel's podcast, our Instagram at Disney Marvel's podcast, TikTok at Disney Marvel's podcast, and on the Twitter at Disney Marvel's. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can catch audio versions of the show as well as some other things on there as well and the live shows whenever I have them. Set your notifications this way. You always know when I'm going live or new things have been posted. Don't forget our Facebook page as well, which the links for those are all in the show, in the show notes. I just want to say here that I'm going to attempt to just rename all these things so you could still, you're not going to have to follow something new. If you are, stay tuned. I will let you know. Listen here to this space or st- I will keep, if I can't switch the name, I will keep the other things active for a little bit of time so you can make the transition over i will let you know what the links are if i need to change them if you're already part of the group and i'm able to change the group then there you go um so just keep uh keep standing by and i will let you know we will be along this ride together but in the meantime if you want to be heard on the show if you want to talk about your favorite disney marvels podcast episodes send us a voice message if you want to wish us luck with the new show with the wd magic cast let us know send us voice we would love to hear from you on what you think of the new name and everything send a voice message email to disney marvels at gmail.com you could also send us a voice message through the anchor app or anchor.fm website record a message electronically there and send it to us Or if you just have any questions or emails or suggestions, or just want to send us an email, send it also to DisneyMarvels at gmail.com. Don't forget to check out the latest Disney Marvel blogs over at DisneyMarvels.blogspot.com. Links to all these are in the show notes. I want to thank you for your time. I want to thank you. I know how little time we have, and the fact that we get to spend these times together means a lot to me. It's why we keep doing the show, why we keep moving forward, because of you. Um, I cannot thank you enough. We cannot thank you enough for everything you guys do for us. Keep coming back week and week again. Um, if you could please go on to Apple Podcasts, leave a rating or review on there. We have all five-star reviews at the moment. Keep them coming, please. Uh, we do read them. I do notice them. Um, and it, it helps helps keep us going. Also, just tell your friends. Shout out on social networks. Tell them in person. Let them know that you're listening to the Disney Marvels podcast. And, um, and the new one, and the new one as well, WD MagicCast as well. The more people we have in this Disney family, the better. Won't believe in a big Disney family? So do I. Don't forget to subscribe to the show. This way you always know when new episodes are posted, and you'll follow along as we, we go through our paces and our changes. While you're at it, consider becoming a premium subscriber. Help the show out. You can do this over at anchor.fm slash disneymarvel slash support or find our Patreon page. You can have also check out our merchandise shop where you got some fun, cool Disney Marvel podcast stuff over there. You can find links to all these in the show notes as well. Because remember, this show is brought to you by listeners like you. And when I say that, I really do mean it. This is why we're going through the name change, why we're continuing to grow, why we are expanding um what the show is because of the listeners like you and we want to bring you more of an experience so 
there's reasons. There's very good reasons. And whatever you're facing out there, whatever darkness, whatever seems to be surrounding you, no matter how impossible things may seem, don't give up. Look deep within yourself and find the light that will guide you to where you need to be. It may not be where you want to go, but it maybe is where you need to be. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Be your own hero. Never give up. Never give in. And let your light shine for the entire world. Because you are beautiful. You are special. You are unique. You are you for a reason. Now I'd like to end this week's show with a quote from Walt Disney himself. Disneyland will always be building and growing and adding new things. New ways to have fun, of learning things, and sharing the many exciting adventures which may be, the ex- may be experienced here in the company of family and friends. And, and one other one that I think is appropriate. Disneyland will never be complete. It will continue to grow as long as there is imagination left in the world. Both of those from Walt Disney himself. Thank you again for listening, everybody. Thank you again for joining in on the final episode of the Disney Marvels podcast. And I look forward to spending time with you next week on the new WD Magicast. Until then, I will see you next time. Because we like you.